deconstructing the past to help you make sense of today. Time for another award-winning episode of Pre-Nicene Perspective with your host, Darren Kalama. Today we're going to do an audio walkthrough of a first century mass. It's non-denominational by definition because it's the original pre-Nicene mass. Let's start with the basics. We'll be reading from Mass, Baptism, and Prayers of the First Christians. It's a liturgical guide published by the Marcionite Christian Church. And I'll have a link in the show notes so you can download it for free as an ebook. Now, at the dawn of Christianity, very few structures were set aside for the sole purpose of conducting Mass, and instead, larger private homes were used, and the Mass was presided over by a presbyter, P-R-E-S-B-Y-T-E-R, usually the owner of the home. A typical Mass would consist of under ten people worshipping together. If you are called to become a Christian leader in your community, you're going to need to know how to conduct a simple Mass and lead others in prayer with the confidence that you're following the liturgical rites and teachings of the first Christians. So let's start with these these basic uh, precepts. Who can do this? Who can run this Mass? Any baptized Christian man who believes Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God was revealed through him is qualified to lead a simple Mass. You or he will assume that title of presbyter. The Mass as structured is again non-denominational and does not favor one brand of Christianity over another. Where does this Mass happen? Any home with a space large enough to accommodate up to 10 people. Ideally the home will have a large C-shaped couch or seating area. In some cases, Mass will have to be conducted underground in a what they call catacomb church. These were the types of churches used by the Christian Russians who lived under Bolshevik persecution. When did these, uh, these Masses happen? Well, the first Christians met twice on Sunday. That's probably where you've heard that phrase, twice on Sunday. Um, the first meeting or uh, Mass was uh, held uh, at dawn. And it was called a service of the word with a prayer and an oath not to partake in theft or adultery. And then again, at the end of the day, there was your main mass. Uh, There was also a meal at the end of that mass. Uh, And that meal was both real and sacramental. It symbolizes fellowship, sharing, unity, and brotherhood. Now, it's important to remember that Saturday was your day of fasting. So we'll begin with the first Mass. It's uh, dawn, sun is uh, just now rising, and it's called the Service of the Word. Uh, I'll speak in the role of presbyter, and we'll begin with the congregation sitting. Awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Honor and glory through endless ages to the King of all the ages, the immortal, the invisible, who is alone, God. Amen. All will now kneel. All respond. Glory in the heights to God, on earth peace to men favor. We praise you, bless you, worship you, laud you. We give you thanks for your great glory. O Lord, King of heaven, God the Father all-powerful, Lord the only Son, Jesus Christ, and you, Holy Spirit, O Lord God, God's Lamb, the Father's Son, you take away the world's sins. Have mercy on us. You take the world's sins away. Accept our prayer. You sit at the Father's right hand. Have mercy on us. For you alone are holy. You alone are Lord. O Jesus Christ, for God the Father's glory. Amen. Now all will stand for the morning prayer and oath. I rise and pledge myself to God to do no deed at all of dark. This day shall be his sacrifice, and I, unmoved, my passions, Lord. I blush to be so old and foul, and yet to stand before his table. You know what I would do, O Christ. O then, to do it, make me able. That will end the service of the word, and uh, you will resume your daily activities until Mass at the end of the day. At the end of the day, we begin our main Mass, 
and it opens with a intercessory prayer. The presbyter begins with his arms outstretched, and all of the parishioners will stand. May God, the author of all endurance and all encouragement, enable you to be all of one mind according to the mind of Christ Jesus, so that you may all have but one heart and one mouth to glorify God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God, the author of our hope, fill you with all joy and peace in your believing, so that you may have hope in abundance through the power of the Holy Spirit. May God, the author of peace, be with you all. Amen. God, who is the author of peace, will crush Satan under your feet before long. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. All will respond, and also with you. Amen. At this point, all parishioners are sitting for a reading of the scripture. You can read any scripture from the epistles of Paul, Galatians, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Romans, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, uh, Laodicians, Colossians, Philemon, and Philippians. You'll find those within pages 75 through 237 of your copy of the very first Bible. After that reading of scripture, there will be a sermon uh, said by the presbyter. And the presbyter can base that sermon on scripture uh, read from any of the above uh, epistles as it applies to events and issues facing the church and community. And the presbyter can also find material within the Gospel of the Lord, which is pages 1 through 72. Following the reading of the uh, scripture and sermon, uh, we begin with communion and we start with a Eucharistic prayer. The presbyter begins, the Lord is with you. All respond, may he be with your spirit too. Presbyter, set your hearts on the things above. All respond, they are fixed on the Lord. Presbyter, let us give thanks to the Lord. All respond, it is right and proper that we should. Presbyter, we give you thanks, O God, through your dear child, Jesus Christ, whom, in this, the last of all periods of time, you sent to save and redeem us, and to tell us what you wanted of us. He is your word, inseparable from you. You made all things through him, and you were well pleased with him. He did what you wanted him to do, and when he suffered, acquiring thereby a holy people for you, he stretched out his hands to free those who believed in you from suffering. When he was handed over to undergo the suffering he had chosen himself, thereby to destroy death, to break the chains the devil held us in, crush hell beneath his feet, give light to the just, make a covenant and manifest his resurrection, he took bread, gave thanks to you, and said, Take this and eat it. It is this body of mine that is to be broken for you. In the same way, he took the chalice, saying, This is my blood being shed for you. When you do this, you will be commemorating me. Calling then his death and resurrection to mind, we offer you bread and a chalice, and we thank you for enabling us to stand before you and serve you. We ask you to send down your Holy Spirit on the offering Holy Church makes you, to unite all who receive Holy Communion and to fill them with the Holy Spirit for the strengthening of their faith in the truth. So we may give you praise and glory through your child, Jesus Christ. All respond, Amen. The Presbyter will now dispense Communion. Following Communion, there is a song and closing prayer. Uh, traditionally, the name of that song is O Gladsome Light, and I will have a, a link in the show notes where you can get the uh, text and video of that song. i uh -huh. 
song is our closing prayer of perseverance. Presbyter begins, Your prayers are more likely to be answered now, for it is easier to obtain what you have asked when you are being persecuted. Beseech the good God then, as earnestly as you can, that we may all confess his name to the end, and that we too may emerge unscathed and glorious from the snares of this world and its darkness. As we have been linked together by charity and peace, and together have withstood persecution from the pagans, so may we rejoice together in the kingdom of heaven. All respond, Amen. Immediately following the closing prayer of perseverance uh, will be the fellowship meal. And it was traditional for the first Christians to share a meal with each other after Mass. Uh, each person brings some food, um, and that food was equally divided among all. This was the fitting end to a day that began with a simple prayer at dawn, culminating in the celebration of God, Christian fellowship, and a shared meal. That meal is also to be delivered to the infirm, sick, or anyone who is unable to attend Mass. We hope you enjoyed this episode on FBN and remind you that you can pick up a free copy of Mass, Baptism, and Prayers of the First Christians and pick up a copy of The Very First Bible at theveryfirstbible.org. I'm Darren Kalama and we'll see you next time on FBN. Discover all things pre-Nicene with a visit to the FBN bookstore. Click on the link at firstbiblenetwork.com.